Thank you very much. Um, Matt Florell, the creator of Vici Dial, president of the Vici Dial Group, a company down in Florida that supports uh, and maintains uh, the Vici Dial open source project. And I'm just going to start out with uh, a, a quick history of Vici Dial so you know where it came from. Um, go over some uh, just basic getting started tips, how you would start using it, and then show you a few uh, live examples of what uh, some live call centers that are using VichyDAO look like, as well as uh, maybe logging in as an agent, stuff like that, depending upon uh, what broadband <coughs> Wi-Fi allows for. So it's been pretty good this year. Only had a couple hiccups, so you're commended. Um, what is VichyDAO? It's an open source call center suite. Uh, inbound, outbound, blended call handling. Runs on top of asterisk, thank goodness, or I wouldn't be here. Uh, Web-based user interfaces, that's agent interfaces, as well as uh, administrative interfaces and uh, web-based APIs. Uh, and it's available in multiple languages. Uh, we've got 14 agent interface languages. Uh, last one we added was Swedish. Um, administrative interfaces in seven languages. Last one we added there was Brazilian Portuguese which is different from Portugal Portuguese because it has extra letters in its alphabet apparently. But uh, we, we actually have a Portuguese agent interface and a Brazilian Portuguese agent interface. Didn't know that until I got into this. Um, why was Vici Dial created? Uh, because Asterisk was available, that was the, the building blocks, the framework of Vici Dial is Asterisk, um, a core Asterisk system and Lack of millions of dollars to buy a proprietary system. Well, there really was no in-between. Uh, if you're looking for something that does outbound, you're either paying uh, an insane amount of money or you are kind of hacking something together. And uh, this started back in 2003, um, talking about hacking something together. Geologic and Bayonne, which I don't know if too many people have heard of the Bayonne project. Uh, it, was, it was very detail level control. You know, it took me uh, a week just to get Dialogic working uh, with a, a T1 card. And then uh, it took me another week just to get Bayonne to do something, namely playing an audio file. So uh, when I heard about Digium and uh, Asterisk, I bought a T1 card and had a system running in two hours. And I was just blown away, especially after dealing with, with Bayonne and Dialogic. This was light years ahead and so much easier to build stuff with it. So then I started playing around with it found AMI and AGI, and uh, the project was born uh, as Perl-only applications. Uh, the first agent interface was Perl TK. Uh, you had to install it on individual computers and configure it and install libraries and all that fun stuff, uh, but it worked. Uh, the next year, uh, Vici Dial the act became a, a kind of a separate component to the uh, AST GUI client project added auto dialing, not predictive yet. Inbound call handling was actually done through a separate application, uh, so there was no blended. Uh, sending calls to other agents came in and then uh, did my first presentation at the first Astrocon in Atlanta. This is the lovely clunky uh, screenshot of what it used to look like. Um, you may recognize some of the buttons and uh, it's it was very utilitarian, but it did work. It was designed only to work on local networks couldn't have at-home agents, all that kind of stuff. But it uh, changed a lot. The next year, we added uh, Ajax uh, and did a web-based agent, a very basic one. Uh, added Blended, so you didn't need a separate agent interface for uh, inbound. A script tab that could populate uh, name, address, phone number, those kind of things into a script, depending upon who the call was going out to. Hotkeys for quick dispositioning. That's uh, so you can just hit one number key and uh, the call gets hung up, dispositioned, and the agent can go right on to the next call without touching their mouse. Multi-server load balancing. This one was fun with asterisk, but since we don't use uh, app queue, it was a lot easier to get it to do that. And our first alternate language, which was Spanish, was released at that time as well. Uh, that was actually a, a collaboration of three Spanish-speaking people that also spoke English, thank goodness, one from uh, Argentina, one from Spain, and one from Mexico. And they had some very interesting arguments on which words should be used for certain things, but uh, most of that was in Spanish, and I couldn't even tell you what it was about. Uh, 
here's the, the basic web interface. Looks a lot like the Perl TK one, but uh, no, no image graphic buttons or anything like that. Uh, but it functioned, and it allowed at-home agents for the first time, and it allowed no zero configuration on the agent side. You just had to send them a web link, so it got a lot easier. Uh, the next year, we won the SourceForge Project of the Year for VoIP applications. Don't know how that happened, but we got enough votes, so that was good. Uh, we had <laughs> scheduled callbacks. Um, alt phone number dialing, so you could have more than one phone number per lead. Uh, predictive dialing algorithm. Uh, we moved to a proper uh, concurrent versioning system uh, code control, and that really helped uh, contributions as well as our own internal development. Uh, here's a screenshot with a lot of, uh, a little more refined. We've added uh, transfer conference in a separate frame and some other additional functions. Uh, the next year, skills-based routing, we really started focusing more on inbound in 2007. Uh, Qmetrics, which is a commercial product, we added compatibility for that. Uh, list mix, a very advanced way of, of having absolute control over what goes into your dialing process. Uh, we start offering our first training classes. We founded a company dedicated only to VichyDAL support, uh, three of us. And uh, we launched a hosted service, which we still have today. Uh, two years ago, we got second prize at uh, the VoIP con conference in Germany uh, out of all VoIP applications. We added queue prioritization, which helped round out our uh, inbound product offering. Added time clock, DID call routing from web interface, uh, and a lot more inbound features like estimated hold time, place in line, and other things that were standard in a lot of other inbound products. We also released a live demo CD. Oh, that's kind of weird. <laughs> uh, let's just skip ahead here so you see all of these. Um, integration, uh, th this is last year. We uh, integrated with Sangoma's uh, call progress analysis product for uh, superior answering machine detection, uh, especially considering the, the poor performance of uh, the asterisk built-in one. Uh, this is much faster and it actually works in parallel to the call being placed because it's a pass-through as opposed to operating in line to the call like it does in asterisk. Uh, we added uh, VTiger CRM integration. Uh, that was a, a very uh, difficult project uh, in itself just because of how things are done inside of VTiger. But uh, we had three pretty big clients that really wanted VTiger integration. And the one thing I learned out of all of that is you don't want to try to put two million records inside of a VTiger database. <laughs> it won't work no matter how much hardware you throw at it. Um, we added web-based IVR configuration text-to-speech integration with Kepstrel, uh, agent shift enforcement, so you could uh, restrict your agent hours, um, web-based asterisk configuration, so you could uh, configure uh, your dial plan directly in the web interface. We added our agent and non-agent APIs at that time, so you could control agent interface actions using uh, just web-based calls. So for logged-in agents, you could also add leads and do other things. We released our 205 version, and we also released a server install ISO at that time. And on to this year, uh, we integrated with the Zoiper web phone, which is Windows only, but it's uh, proven to be a very, uh, very good uh, at well-rounded option for uh, zero installation and zero configuration on the agent side, uh, somebody that doesn't even have to have a phone. If you have uh, an agent workstation and a USB headset, now that you can just give the agent a URL and a login, and the phone will load on the agent screen, uh, which, and it, it's not Java-based. So it, it can actually last an entire eight-hour session uh, with no voice issues. So we've had a lot of problems. We tried some Java phones over the years, but the Zoiper web phone, we have, uh, I think, three, four clients now up and running. Uh, one of them is a 250-seat inbound call center with agents dis distributed across the U.S., and it works beautifully. So uh, we are also a Zoiper reseller. <laughs> uh, that, that came out of how well uh, our, our initial testing went with uh, the Zoiper web phone. Um, custom fields and forms, this one took a long time to build, uh, but we ended up building a custom uh, field 
infrastructure, substructure that would allow you to have millions of leads, even though you were using custom fields. It doesn't use the typical CRM solution of creating multiple records for custom fields. It actually generates custom MySQL tables out of the definitions you put in of those custom fields. And we'll show you a little bit about that later. Uh, a lot more inbound call handling features we've added. Um, the ability to automatically send data to external web systems at call start and call finish uh, in the background. Uh, we recently released a Firefox plugin that would allow select to dial, meaning you select the phone number uh, off of any website, you right click and send it to Vici Dial and it'll call the number through a logged in agent. Uh, earlier this year we released 221 and uh, we switched our VichiBox server installation ISO over to OpenSUSE because they came out with a uh, ISO builder tool that, uh, incredibly, that offers incredibly fast deployment of uh, ISO images. And this is a current screenshot uh, just from a couple months ago. This shows custom fields uh, and you can actually uh, have date fields, radio select fields, um, checkbox fields, uh, text blocks, uh, just text lines, select list, multi-select lists, all those things. It's all configurable through the web. You actually build it through a web interface, as well as scripting elements. Planned features for the future are uh, website chat instant messaging, um, which would be a, a, an entirely internalized system with full logging and permissions and a group and campaign based permissions where you could take in instant messaging chats off of websites. You could have agents be able to instant message each other, as well as managers, as well as manager broadcast. Haven't started working on it yet, but we have a framework in place and it should be uh, done at some point next year. Uh, holiday scheduling uh, this is something we've, we've lacked for a while, but we've also lacked anybody wanting to sponsor it, uh, which would actually be putting in a uh, holiday, you know. July 4th, 2012, putting that in and putting holiday uh, hours in a long, uh, long time into the future. Currently, uh, holiday scheduling is really done on a week by week basis. You can do it up to seven days in advance and that's it. Uh, also, of course, asterisk 1.8 compatibility. Yes, we are planning for that. Um, we did skip over 1.6. <laughs> uh, no support for it at all currently because uh, it's basically being abandoned by Digium before the end of next year, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So um, we're, we're hopefully going to be jumping onto the Asterisk 1.8 bandwagon. From what we've seen, uh, we're pretty encouraged by it. So that's our plan. Currently, we're still running uh, entirely on 1.4. But we've had a, a high degree of stability 